Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening. Here we are again. Uh, God has once again shown himself strong. He has once again uh, displayed his kindness and has granted us another Tuesday night uh, as an opportunity to come together and study his word, uh, even as we witness uh, the distressing uh, new developments in terms of the pandemic, even as we uh, see uh, what looked like advances uh, evaporate right in front of us, uh, as we go back into another uh, segment of, of shutdown, uh, the word of God is not bound and God is never shut down. Uh, so even as we continue to utilize uh, technology and utilize the multimedia platforms, uh, we continue to seek to serve the Lord and continue to uh, study his word and be impacted by his word. Uh, so tonight's lesson, uh, we're coming again from the 19th Psalm, Psalm 19, and our topic is God's testimony in the word, God's testimony in the word. Last week we were in Psalm 19 verses one through six, talking about God's testimony in the world, in creation, and tonight we're looking at God's testimony in the word as found in verses seven through 14. Uh, and this is one of my favorite uh, portions, my favorite, one of my favorite passages of, of scripture among the, especially among the Psalms, uh, because it really is a, 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 a mini uh, poem to the word of God. Uh, as we've uh, said in this setting and in other settings, uh, this is sort of like a mini Psalm 119. And if you know uh, anything about Psalm 119, you know that that is uh, the longest of all the uh, chapters of the Bible, the longest of all the Psalms, uh, and it's some 170 some odd verses, each verse dedicated to uh, declaring the greatness and the worthiness and the power of the word of God. Well, in Psalm 19, uh, in these uh, seven verses, uh, it's a close second because the, each verse is, is power packed uh, with a tribute to the word of God. Uh, so as we go into this lesson, uh, it, it's my prayer that we will uh, appreciate even that much the more uh, the word that we are endeavoring to study, uh, even in these Tuesday night Bible classes. So again, we're in Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. And it reads, the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth in the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, how we thank you for this time that you have permitted and allowed us to gather, uh, even via the technology that is available to us, we yet gather to study your word. We ask, Father, that as we open your word, that you would open up our hearts and our minds, that we would behold your truth, that we would be impacted by your truth, and that we would then apply your truth, apply it to our daily living. 
We do give you honor, we do give you glory, and we do give you praise. And it's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we pray. Amen. Uh, so again, uh, we're looking at the testimony of God uh, in his word. And uh, like we said last week, we were looking at his testimony in the world. And it was just, I wanted to kind of put a little uh, a coda on last week's lesson before we get into this week's lesson. Uh, last week, we looked at how uh, God is speaking through creation. He's speaking through uh, the heavens. The heavens declare his glory. The firmament shows his handiwork. Uh, the skies, uh, the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, the stars, uh, every sunrise and every sunset, all of that is declaring the, 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 the glory of God. All of that is making clear that there is a God, that he exists and that he is magnificent. Now, that's what creation says. And, 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 the, and the reality is, if for, for the person who's uh, an atheist or the person who does not believe in God, uh, that, then that person has to believe, uh, has to be a strong believer in luck. Because the only, the, the only logical, the only reasonable uh, uh, explanation for everything that there is being here uh, is that uh, somebody made it, somebody designed it, somebody put it together. Uh, so if you, if you consider the probability of all of this just happening, think of it like this, uh, winning the lottery, uh, to win the lottery, the, 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 one of the, the national lotteries, Mega Millions, uh, Powerball, whatever it is, uh, winning the lottery, the odds of, of anybody winning the lottery is one in 300 million, one in 300 million. Uh, that's, that's, that's a high uh, 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 a very low probability, very high number, very high high odds that you're not going to win. Uh, and that doesn't defer anybody from from trying to play. Uh, uh, but 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 chances are, uh, at least for, as far as the big jackpot goes, uh, you're not going to win. Um, so 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 think about this: if, if you were to uh, number 100 cards, uh, one to 100, and then you shuffled them, uh, shuffled them real good, and then just randomly laid them out. Uh, the odds, uh, uh, the chances that they would come out in order uh, from 1 to 100 is 1 in 10 to the 158th power. And we don't have a name for that number. That, that, that's a 1 with 158 zeros. Uh, it's, it's an inconceivable uh, 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 number. Uh, and it's vir so basically, it's, it's virtually impossible for something that, like that to happen by chance. 100 cards laid out randomly and being in order numerically from one to 100. Now that's a virtual impossibility. But every cell in your body is infinitely more complex than 100 numbers in order. So, so, so the, the chances that, that, that a protein molecule one of the, 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 the billions in your body that a protein molecule could just randomly happen. The chances of that just randomly happening is one in 10 to the 450th power. Now remember the, the, the cars, it was one in 10 to the 158th. A protein molecule is one in 10 to the 450th. The DNA chains in your body, one DNA chain, the chance of that happening just uh, by chance is one in 10 to the 600th power. So, so basically, uh, uh, if all of this just happened, if, if all of this just happened over the course of, of millions and billions of years, and, 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 and we just kind of came together like this in this ordered universe with this irreducible complexity uh, and all that we see all around us, if, if that's the case, then you and I need to quit our jobs and move to Vegas and become professional gamblers because we are the luckiest somebodies uh, in the universe for all of this to happen. Keep on playing those mega millions because you're bound to hit if all of this just happened by chance. The point is it couldn't have happened by chance. It is unreasonable to believe it just happened by chance. Your very existence is declaring the glory of God. Uh, the, 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 the functioning of your body is declaring, it is, it is God's signature on the painting that says, I am here, I exist, I made it all, and you need to get to know me. 
Uh, but 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 again, tonight's lesson we're moving from the the word to the world rather to the word. Uh, so in verse seven, uh, as the psalmist begins, he says, "The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul." The law of the Lord, the law of the Lord. The, the Hebrew word there is, is is as you might expect Torah, uh, Torah, which means direction. It means uh, instruction, and it doesn't just uh, refer to the first five books of the Bible. It's not just uh, the, the Pentateuch that's the Torah. It's all of the law. Uh, and, and, and here the, 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 the psalmist says that the law of the Lord is perfect. Uh, tamim is the Hebrew word, perfect. It's, it's complete. It's, it's sound. It's whole. And it's the word that was used to describe uh, the animal sacrifice. Whenever we read in the Old Testament of the animal sacrifice being without blemish, being without defect, that's to mean, uh, without blemish, no imperfections. So this lets us know that there are no imperfections in the word of God. There are no imperfections in the word of God. Now, I, I know that there are, are some who would say, uh, this is kind of along the lines of what we've been dealing with on Sunday mornings, there are people who are attacking the Bible, who are relentless in their attacks on the word of God, they tell you they tell you that it's that it's full of errors. They tell you that it's full of of inconsistencies. Uh, but 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 that's not so. Uh, the, the word declares that the word is perfect, uh, and 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 the the, the word uh, uh, speaks of its own. Uh, it speaks truth about itself, uh, and we're going to get into that as we go further to the lesson. Uh, but but we uh, who are among the redeemed, I'll put it like that. Uh, there's a, a, a witness of the spirit. The reason why, the reason why you believe the word is true and your neighbor or your sibling or your parent or your child does not believe the word is true uh, is because you've been endowed by the Holy Spirit. There's a witness of the spirit that the word of God is true and the word uh, uh, verifies and confirms itself. In Psalm 119, again, we're going to be going into Psalm 119 a couple of times tonight. Psalm 119, verse 96 says, I have seen the consummation of all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. It says, I've seen the, the consummation of all perfection. If you read it in the NIV, it says this, to all perfection, I see a limit, but your commands are boundless. So what the word is saying about itself is that other things may look perfect, may seem to be perfect, but there's a limit to their perfection. There's a limit to their flawlessness. The most flawless uh, diamond uh, you can uh, hope to, 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 to gain or to purchase has got some flaws in it somewhere. So, but this word, uh, this Bible is, is perfectly perfect. Uh, it, it, it's, it's complete in its perfection. It is whole and it is sound. And then we see what it does. It says it, it, it's perfect and it, it's to the converting of the soul. Yeah, that's the, the, the distinction between the word of God and anybody else's word, any other word, any other book that you might find. The, the word of God changes men from the inside out. Only the Bible can convert a soul. We can get wisdom and guidance from lots of, 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 of supposedly holy books, a lot of, of, of wisdom from, from other uh, uh, faith traditions and other religious writings, but only the Bible, only the word of God converts the soul. That's what he says here. He says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Uh, then he goes on and talks about the, the, the testimony. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The testimony, the Hebrew word there is eduth. It means ordinances, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with the Old Testament, you know that oftentimes the Ark of the Covenant is referred to as the Ark of the Testimony because God's testimony to Moses and to the children of Israel and to mankind was placed in the Ark. It was his testimony. These were his ordinances. And the psalmist says that the ordinances of the Lord are sure. Sure, the, the, the word, that word means, the Hebrew word means to be confirmed. It means to be verified. It means that, the, the, that there are witnesses that can testify to the, the veracity and the validity of this word. So he says that the, the testimony of the Lord is sure. And then he says, it makes wise the simple. 
The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The word of God, when we uh, adhere to it, when we listen to it, when we obey it and observe it, it brings wisdom. It brings wisdom to the simple. Uh, and there are many, many uh, uh, verses we could consider uh, that, that, that speak to this reality. Uh, but there's, there's one in particular we're going to look at, uh, Proverbs 2. It's kind of lengthy, but it's worth it, I think. Uh, Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 9. And it says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your heart to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Here it is. For the Lord gives wisdom, verse six, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. You'll understand these things. You will gain wisdom when you adhere and observe and obey the word of the Lord. The Lord gives wisdom. He makes wise the simple, and he does it through his word. This is not something that gets zapped down uh, to certain special people, uh, but this is a wisdom that comes from time spent, quality time spent in the word. Knowing not just having knowledge, but knowing what to do with the knowledge that comes from time spent in the word of God, meditating like we talked about before, meditating on the word of God. It says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Moving on to verse eight, he says, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The statutes, uh, the Hebrew word there literally means the precepts or the charges from the Lord. In other words, what you must do according to the Lord. He says, those statutes are right. Yes, the statutes of the Lord are right. And, and right means right. You, you look it up in the Hebrew and, and, and parse out all the different uh, 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 permutations of it. It means right. The, 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 the statutes of the Lord are right. The Bible, hallelujah, is right. Somebody said somebody must be wrong. If the Bible is right, somebody must be wrong. Uh, and, and this is something that, that, that we uh, are, 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 are loath to speak of and, and, and reluctant to kind of own up to, that we believe the Bible is right. Uh, but, but in the words of the Apostle Paul, let God be true and every man a liar. We, we, the, the, the Bible is right. Uh, the Bible is, uh, is telling us the truth. The Bible is trustworthy. We're going to see that in, in a few verses also. But it, the Bible is right. Uh, 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 even the parts of the Bible that we don't like are right. Uh, and, and it's amazing how frequently uh, so many people uh, 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 find it uh, uh, not at all hypocritical uh, to, to, to pick, to go through the Bible, find all the parts that they uh, disagree with and say they're wrong. Those parts are wrong, but the parts that I agree with, those parts are right. And, and not see any kind of disconnect, not, not see any kind of, of ulterior motives in, in what they're choosing to believe is right and what they're choosing to believe is wrong. Uh, but, but, but the Bible is right. The, the statutes of the Lord are right. Psalm 119, verse 75 says this. It says, I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right and in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Mm, that's what the psalmist says. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Even when the word afflicts me, it's right. Even when the word cuts me, it's right. Even when the world challenge, even when the word challenges my whole worldview. Saints of God, the word is right. He says, in faithfulness you have afflicted me. It was, it's a faithful act on the Lord's part to put the truth in his word and not allow us uh, to, to turn a blind eye from it uh, or, or, to, or to wink it away or to blink it away. This is the word and it's right. 
whether it, 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 it feels good or not, whether it conforms with the culture or not, the word is right. And then he says this, that the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. That they rejoice the heart when we adhere to the statutes. The, 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 they, they, they bring a, a lightness and a, and a joy to the heart. Uh, 1 John 5 and 3 uh, says this, uh, uh, John talking, he says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. They're not grievous in the King James. They're not burdensome. The commandments of God rejoice the heart. G God, is, God is not trying to, to, to mess up your life with his word. He's trying to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. The word of God will rejoice the heart as we adhere to it, as we observe it, as we submit and surrender to it, especially the gospel piece of it. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to, 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 to help us to, to, to rightly uh, apply and rightly uh, consider the word of God. We'll, 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 it will rejoice our hearts when we are in right relationship to it through Christ. But he says that the statutes of, of, of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Then he goes on, he says, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The commandment of the Lord, the mitzvah, uh, the mitzvah, the commandment of the Lord. Uh, um, most of us, if not all of us, have heard of uh, the, 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 the Jewish tradition of the bar mitzvah. Now, when a, uh, or, or a bat mitzvah for the, for the girls, when a, when a boy or a girl turns 13, they, they're given the, the bar mitzvah. And that literally means, bar means to be subject to. So it means to be subject to the commandment. That, that's what the whole bar mitzvah, uh, ceremony is about. That, that this is now a person who has come of age. And now they are, uh, they've reached what, what we might call the age of accountability, if you will. So, so now they're subject to the commandment. Now they're under the commandment. They're under the mitzvah. And here the psalmist says that the, 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 the mitzvah of the Lord is pure. It is pure. That word literally means clean. It means uh, unsullied. It means uh, not defiled. It means unspotted. The word of God is pure. Proverbs 30 and 5 says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. I know many would like to, to tell you that the word of God has been corrupted, uh, that the word of God has been tampered with, that the word of God has been tainted. Whenever somebody says that, uh, whenever I hear somebody say that, what, what, what I automatically uh, think of, what I, what I usually I'm watching somebody on TV or something, so I can't really talk to them. But what I want to say, if I could say it is, uh, and where is your rough draft of the Bible? Do you have the original copy of the Bible? Because otherwise, how do you know? that the Bible has been tainted, that the Bible has been tampered with, that the Bible has been corrupted. You don't know. The fact of the matter is you just read that in a book. Your, your book says the Bible is corrupted. My book, the Bible says the Bible is pure. I'm going to believe my book. You roll with your book. I'm running with this book. The Bible says the Bible is pure. It is clean. Every word of God, Psalm, Proverbs 35, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Ro Romans 7 and 12, therefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. And he says, when you understand that the purity of the word, the purity of the commandment hits you, he says, it will enlighten the eye. He says, oh, there's a lot of good stuff that happens when we uh, take heed and adhere to this word. It enlightens the eyes. And again, we, we, we see a, 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 a parallel to this in Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verses 98 through 100. It says this, you through your commandments, addressing the Lord, you through your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies on my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. He says, your word is making me wise. Your word is giving me understanding. Your word is enlightening my eyes. 
I'm receiving divine illumination from your word, through your word. Your word is making it clear. Your word is helping me understand. Your word is helping me to decide, discern the times in which I'm living. It's the word that's doing that. He says, he says it's, 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 it, it enlightens the eyes. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Then in verse nine, he goes on. He says, the fear of the Lord. He says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The fear of the Lord, the, the, the reverence of the Lord. So, so what, this, what this lets us see here is that fear of the Lord is equated with reverence of his word. If we fear the Lord, if we reverence the Lord, we're going to reverence his word as well. And I, I would submit to us that, that I, can, I can tell how somebody feels about the Lord by what they feel and how they feel about his word. I, I, I've not met a lot of folks who have a low view of scripture, but have a high view of the Lord. I, I haven't met that many people who have a low view of scripture. If you've got a low view of scripture, that is, that is, that it's fallible, that it's, that it's tainted, that it's corrupted, uh, that it's filled with spurious inconsistencies, as I heard one person say, if you believe that about the word, you can't have a high opinion about the Lord. Because what does that say about the Lord that he allowed that to happen to his book? If the Lord didn't care any more about his book than to let it be tampered with and to be filled with spurious inconsistencies, then what does that say about the Lord? No, if, if, if we have a high view of the Lord, if we have a reverence and a fear for the Lord, we ought to have a reverence for his book. So he says the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. It's clean. The, the, the Hebrew word there is tahor, and it's a, a, a synonym of the word from, from, from the previous verse. It, 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 the, the, the word that's translated uh, uh, clean is the same as pure, and the word that's translated pure is the same as clean. The fear of the Lord is, is, is clean, it's pure, it, 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 it's unadulterated. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a helpful fear. It, it's, it's the only uh, good fear that there is. Fear of the Lord, the word says, is the beginning of knowledge. Uh, the fear of the Lord is, is necessary uh, for, for someone uh, to, to, to really seek the, the truth that will bring them to salvation. Until a person has a healthy fear of the Lord and a healthy reverence for the Lord, chances are they're not going to see the, their need for salvation. But the fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is clean. It is clean and it is enduring forever, he says. This word is an eternal word and it is eternally pure and eternally clean and eternally unsullied. So again, it, it, it's not like it, it started off clean and then somewhere around 300, 400 AD, somebody came and messed it up. No, no, it is eternally clean. It endures forever. In the words of the Lord Jesus, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, my word, my word will never pass away. This word endures forever and it endures forever in purity in cleanness, in uh, perfection, uh, in, in, in clarity, in all the things that have been uh, said before us, set before us uh, in just these few verses. And then, then, he, then he goes on in verse nine, talks about the judgments. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The judgments, the mishpat, it means the ordinance. It means the regulations. It means what has been decided by the Lord. It says his judgments are true. True. Simply, uh, uh, the Hebrew word there is MF and it means firm. It means his words are faithful. His judgments are reliable. And, and it helps us to see and understand that, that you can count on the word. You and I can rely on the word. We can rest confidently on the word of God. Uh, regardless of the pot shots uh, that, that, that are being uh, slung at it uh, and, and all the more uh, in, in, in these times in which we're living, uh, the, the, the Bible is coming under attack just as the church is coming under attack. But the word of God is true. The judgments of God is are true. We can count on the word. They're not only that, but they are righteous. Sadak. They are, they are just uh, the judgments of God. They are righteous. 
uh, all together. They are completely righteous. There's no injustice in the word. Just as it's completely perfect and it's completely just. So, 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 so what we have in these, in these first three verses are six statements about the word of God. We're given six uh, similes, six euphemisms for the word, the law, the testimony, the statutes, the commandment, the fear, and the judgments. We're given six attributes of the word of God. It's perfect. It's sure. It's right. It's pure. It's clean. It's true. We're given six results of what the word does in the life of the believer. It converts the soul. It makes wise the simple. It rejoices the heart. It enlightens the eyes. It endures forever and it is completely righteous and it makes the man or woman who trusts in the word righteous as well. It decrees and declares that man or woman to be righteous. We get all of this from the word. So, so, so let the naysayers say nay. Uh, let, let the skeptics be skeptical, beloved brothers and sisters. We got nothing to be ashamed of. We've got nothing to be embarrassed by. The word of God is true and pure and right and clean and true, and it will be forevermore. It does not change. It will not change. It cannot change. It is an eternal word. And through the word, the Lord speaks to the world. And he, and he, and his judgments go forth, regardless of, of how times change and how cultures shift and how society quote unquote evolves, the word of God remains the same. And when it is rightly divided and rightly interpreted, uh, it is a uh, uh, light to blinded eyes. It is wisdom to ignorant minds. It, it is clarity to confused souls. It is, it is rejoicing to depressed hearts. The word of God will, will, will handle whatever it is uh, that we're dealing with, whatever it is that we are struggling with, whatever it is that we are burdened down and laden down by, the word of God will handle it. And God speaks through his word. Uh, so then we move on uh, into verse 10. Uh, he goes on and, and gives another description, another very vivid description of the word. He says in verse 10, it is more to be desired, more of these, these commandments of God. They are more to be desired, are they, than gold, yea, than much fine gold. He says that this word is more valuable than money. This word, the, the truth of God in his word is more valuable than money. The word is, is more desirable, more to be sought after, more to be pursued than much fine gold. Now, I know we don't believe that. We, 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 some of us are saying amen right now. We're nodding and saying amen, but we don't believe that. Because uh, uh, at, at, our, at our root, at our core, at our, at our base, our basic instinct is I need money. I need more money. I need uh, to accrue money. I need to gain money because money is going to give me security. Money is going to give me safety. Money is going to make everything all right. And what I really need is money. The word is good. I like the word. Preach on, pastor. But I need money. But the word declares the word is better than money. It is a more valid and a more valiant pursuit. It is, more, it is better for you, better for your life, better for your family that you pursue the word than that you pursue money. Now, yes, we, we need money. Yes, we need money to live. But the, 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 the word is something that we need that's going to uh, help us know, first of all, how to deal with money, how to handle money, how not to let money overtake us and corrupt us. And, 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 and most importantly, the word is going to carry us beyond where money can't take us. Money can only take you to the end of this life. Money can take you uh, to, to, to a nice, pretty funeral and, and, and a horse-drawn carriage carrying your body to the, to the grave and, 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 a, and a New Orleans brass band playing you back all, all the way to the, to the grave. Money can get you all that. But once they put you in the hole, money has ended. Money has lost all of its efficacy. But this word, this word, brothers and sisters, children of God, this word will carry you. 
The truth of this word will propel you and, 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 and welcome you into everlasting habitations. I'm reminded of the story that we all know of Lazarus and the rich man. This is a perfect example. The rich man had it going on. The rich man had all the money he could ever hope to have. But, and Lazarus was begging at his gate, uh, we're, we're looking for whatever the, the rich man uh, threw out the gate. That's what the, 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 the poor man, Lazarus, was, was looking to, 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 to eat and looking to feed himself with. But the word of God says that they both died. And when they both died, the rich man died and was buried. And again, we're sure he had a, a fantastic uh, homegoing celebration. Uh, but when he died, he was buried. When Lazarus was died, yeah, he was carried. He was carried into the bosom of Abraham because he was righteous, because he had a relationship with God. And that is a relationship that is forged and founded in his word. So the word is more to be desired than gold. It is sweeter, he says, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Proverbs 16 and 24 says, pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. The, the, the word of God, it, 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 it gives and brings a sweetness to the soul. When we are living by this word, when we are walking in accord with this word by the power of the Holy Spirit, there ought to be a sweetness to us. We ought to be getting, uh, just like Jesus, sweeter as the days go by. Shouldn't be getting older and meaner. Oh, help us, Lord. Should be getting older and more bitter. Should be getting older and more brittle. Should be getting older and sweeter as we're living by the word, as we are walking in the word. There ought to be an increasing sweetness of our soul, health to our bones, a healthy and rejoicing demeanor uh, that, that, that becomes characteristic of us as we live and submit in the light of the word of God. And the, 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 the following verse in Proverbs, Proverbs 16, 24 says, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness of the soul and health of the bones. Verse 25 says this, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. I would submit to us that, that there's a, he, there's a, a, a distinction being uh, taken place. The, 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 the writer of the Proverbs is, is putting two ways of life. Uh, opposing them to each other. The, the, the way that is that is lived by the word, a way that is uh, inundated by the word, that is uh, submitted to the word, and a way that follows his own way. The way that goes the way that seems right to him. The way that is uh, submitted to the word leads to sweetness of soul and health to the bones. The way that says, I'm going to do it my way and forget what the Bible says. I don't trust it. I don't believe it. It's old fairy tales. It's old wives tales. It's mythology. That way is the way of death. Oh, beloved, submit. We submit gladly to the word of God. It's sweeter than the honeycomb, more desirable than fine gold. Verse 11, he says this, moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. There's a warning in the word. There's so, so much that there is in the word. And among the things that there is in the word is warning. There is warning. It says, by them, your servant is warned. Much of, 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 of the, the, the dismay and the distress that we've been through in our lives, we could have avoided had we simply heeded the warning in the word. Had we simply listened to what the word said, uh, we would have spared ourselves innumerable heartaches and sorrows. There's warning in the word. It's along the lines of what we've been dealing with on Sunday. Jude is trying to warn the church. There's a warning for the church of the, of the false teachers uh, that are on the horizon and already in their midst. Well, there's all kinds of warnings in this word. It says your servant is warned by them as we take heed to the word. Not only is he warned by the word, but he's rewarded by the word. He says in keeping them, there is great reward. There is reward in observance of the word. There's reward in keeping the commandments. Matthew 6 and 6, just as, as, as one of many examples, Jesus says this, but you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
There's a reward when we pray like the word says pray. Uh, uh, Mark 9, 41, for whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, assuredly, I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. There's a, there's a reward for, for having a servant's heart and serving the people of God. Luke 6, 35, but love your enemies, do good and land, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. There's a reward for loving your enemies. There's a reward for doing good to them that, that despitefully use you. There, there's a reward for praying for those that, that, that want your downfall. There's a reward because your reward will be great. It pays to serve Jesus, brothers and sisters. It pays to serve Jesus. Now, we don't serve him because we're looking for rewards, but we will be rewarded if we serve him. We serve him because we love him. We serve him because uh, he has saved us. We serve him because we owe him our everything. But there's reward for those who serve the Lord. The, the Lord is, he, he will not allow, I declare he will not allow faithfulness to go unrewarded. So, so he says in keeping them, in keeping the commands, in keeping the law, in keeping the word of God, there is great reward. And finally, as we uh, quickly close uh, the lesson, we also see how the word helps with sin, how the word deals with us when it comes to sin. Verse 12 says, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Uh, who can understand his errors? Uh, help me, uh, uh, cleanse me from secret faults. One translation talks about it as hidden sins. Says that he says he, he's crying out to the Lord to, to, to forgive him and to help him with those hidden sins, those, those sins that he doesn't even, uh, doesn't even have awareness of. The stuff that he's doing that he doesn't even know is wrong. The stuff that he's not doing that he doesn't even know he should be doing. He says those are hidden faults. Those are hidden sins. Those are, are, are secret faults. And he says the, the word will help us with those. As we spend time in the word, the more time you spend in the word, uh, not only is your, is your soul rejoicing, not only are you drawn closer and closer to the Lord, but you begin to see more and more of what is, is not right uh, in your own walk and in your own life. You begin to see. And, and, and I will submit that, that the more we spend time in the word, the more we are be, should be focusing in on ourselves and where we're falling short and not on others and where they're falling short. Uh, the, 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 the word should be helping us with our hidden faults, with our secret sins. He says, he says, cleanse thou me from secret faults, the stuff that I don't know about. But then he goes on in verse 13. He says, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Oh, Lord, let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. He says, I want to be cleansed from secret faults, but I need to be kept back from presumptuous sins. That, 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 that hidden faults are the sins that I don't know I'm doing. Presumptuous sins are the sins that I know full well I'm doing. It's sin and I know it's sin. I do it, I know it's wrong, and I do it anyway. That's a presumptuous sin. And he says, Lord, keep me from presumptuous sins. Reveal and cleanse me from my hidden sins, but please keep me from presumptuous sins. Keep me from, one translation says, willful sins. See, sometimes there are some who have this mindset that, that, that well, you know, I'm going I'm to do what I'm going to do. Uh, I've I, I made this plan. I've determined that this is the best course of action. And yeah, I know it's sin, but the Lord's just going to have to forgive me. Brother, sister, hear me, please. The Lord does not have to do anything. He is under no obligation to forgive us of presumptuous and willful sins. But our prayer ought to be, Lord, use your word to keep me from presumptuous sins. 
Lord, help me to study and scour this book so 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 I have the, the right heart towards you. He's about to get into that in the next in the, in the last verse. That, 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 that my heart will be so inclined to you that presumptuous sin does not appeal to me. Presumptuous sin will actually uh, terrify me. Presumptuous sin ought to sicken me. It ought to turn my stomach to think that I would rebel in the face of the God who has loved me and has given himself for me. That's presumptuous sin. So he says, Lord, keep me, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Yeah, uh, we got to hurry along, but, but presumptuous sin has a way of, of taking over in a way that hidden sin does not. When a person can sit, continues to rebel and rebel and rebel against God in a particular way, that sin will begin to have dominion over them. They will begin to, that will become, begin to become a besetting sin, to use the words of Paul, where, where it, it, it just, it just, it just, I, I can't help it anymore. I used to do it presumptuously. Now I do it and I can't even uh, bring myself not to do it. It has dominion over me now. He says, Lord, keep me from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression to sin willfully, to sin, to sin presumptuously. It's great transgression. Uh, and, and, and no child of God uh, should find their way clear to being comfortable with presumptuous sin. Help us today, O oh God. And then finally, in verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The, 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 the word as I submit to it, the word as I uh, adhere to it, uh, the word will begin to transform me. As, as he said, it converts the soul and enlightens the eyes. And, and, my, and the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart should be more and more in line with the word of God the longer I live and the more time I spend in his word. And the psalmist cries out, let the words of my mouth and the meditation, let my, let my speech and my attitudes and my actions be acceptable in your sight. Because you're you're, it, it, it's in his sight that we need to be acceptable. We might not be acceptable oh, to the prevailing culture. We might not be acceptable uh, to, 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 to black Twitter. We might not be acceptable uh, to, 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 to the, to the uh, keepers uh, uh, and, and the tastemakers of society. But I want to be acceptable in the Lord's sight because he's my strength and he's my redeemer. Oh, saints of God, somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to say amen. The Lord who is my strength and my redeemer, I need to be and want to be acceptable in his sight. And it's as I live in the light of his word, as I submit uh, to his commandments, to his statutes, to his precepts, uh, to, to, to the fear of the Lord, to all of the ways that he describes his holy word in this glorious psalm, uh, as I submit and yield to that, I will be living a life that is acceptable in the sight of the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit as a redeemed child of God through Christ Jesus. We can't leave the gospel out of this. We can't forget that this is not something that we can just do of our own will. Uh, the word is our, our school teacher. It's our schoolmaster to drive us to the cross, to show us that we can't do it by ourselves. Uh, the, 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 the word by itself is condemnation, but in the light of Christ, it, it rejoices the soul. It brings freedom. It brings liberty. It sets the captive free. And the Lord is testifying to the world through his word. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. God bless you, saints of God. We thank the Lord for his word. Uh, so in the few minutes we have left, uh, we're going to see if we have any questions. We don't have any questions. Well, God bless you once again. Uh, let's continue uh, in the, the study of his word, in the obedience to his word, and in the love for his word that comes from redeemed hearts. Uh, we say God bless you each and every one. Uh, we want to continue uh, to be in prayer for 
uh, all of the membership. Uh, again, we, we're seeing the, the, the shutdown and the re-shutdown uh, going on, uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, some of the things that, that we've said in earlier uh, instances about reopening, uh, that is looking like some the situation is changing. Uh, we're going to have some things to say about that in the future, not too distant future. Uh, but in the meantime, as we say, in the meantime, we continue to trust and we continue to pray. Let's uh, join in tomorrow at noon, tomorrow at 6.30 uh, for our time in prayer. Uh, and then hope to uh, see all of you, uh, so to speak, on Sunday through our uh, live stream and through uh, the various ways that we are uh, trying to bring the word to everybody. Continue to look in on one another, continue to look out for one another. Um, and we're going to make it through. Uh, as the people of God, we're going to make it through. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you now thanking you, thanking you for the preciousness of your word, that it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, uh, that by them your servants are warned and in keeping them there is great reward. Uh, help us to continue uh, to live in the light of your word, to rejoice in the, the truth of your word, to stand on the promises in your word and to not allow anybody or anything uh, to scare us or shake us off of your word. Uh, we do give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. We lift the entire great Ebenezer family up to you, each and every family, each and every individual member. I ask that you would continue to encamp your angels round about each and every one of us. Father, we need your protection. We need your help. We need your love, we need your hope, and we need your peace granted in Jesus' name. And we thank you in advance. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray and we do thank you. Amen. God bless you, saints, and we will see and talk to you real soon.